I'm back. I want to talk a little bit more about masks, but now I'm in the truck, I can take the mask off. Hi, welcome to my truck. There is so much about this metaphor that works, particularly in these times. If you have not yet read Terry Reel and what we've been talking about, sorry, I have to hold this steady, what we've been talking about in terms of emotional regulation, to, um, offending from the victim position, losing strategies, winning strategies, one of the things that he talks about a lot, along with Pia Melody, is unbridled self-expression. It's one of the five losing strategies. I'd like you to consider of thinking of unbridled self-expression as the coronavirus itself. There's a lot of connection there, actually. In the sense that the coronavirus looks like, at least at the beginning, any common cold, any flu. It looks like it's just another thing, no big deal, something we have to live with that's just part of the life we live. And a lot of the times we think of unbridled self-expression the exact same way. We think of it as not a big deal. We think that we are not spreading anything that can harm an individual, that can get under the skin of a very community. And by the way, a community is just like a person. It is another entity in and of itself, if that makes sense to you. In any case, while we're spreading these coronavirus germs, it not only changes our lungs, but it mutates our very selves. That's true. And another thing about coronavirus that I learned is that it is insidious and it hangs around a long time. Um, I sing, or at least I used to sing, so I'm, in, I'm always looking at things about singers, how we speak, all of this. I want you to consider something as you're looking at me through my phone. My phone, as I talk, is being covered with germs, which is why you should kind of take a little thing and wipe your phone off now and again, neither here nor there. But what I'm saying is that what I am saying is spraying, it's spewing. And the thing about the coronavirus is that there are micrograms, as they say, in coronavirus. In some viruses and bacteria, they're relatively big. They're like this. So gravity eventually gets them. So they hang in the air for anywhere from 30 seconds to three minutes. And they only go so far. Well, with the coronavirus, we don't know exactly how far it goes. Six feet is a guess. Nine feet is actually probably a safer bet. But that's not the problem. One part, when I was sitting, I want you to think about this. When I was standing in line in the Albertson store just now, they were practicing social distancing. But did you notice that every single time I walked up, I was in the airspace of someone else? relatively quickly. Some people are saying the coronavirus takes up to 14 minutes to finally dissipate because of the smallness and the fact that gravity doesn't bring it down as much as it would in other people. That's something to remember. Let's switch it around back to race and our, and our community. When you spew, it sticks and it infects more than you think. Can I say this again? When you practice unbridled self-expression or any of the other looting, losing strategies, it sticks around. You don't just say it and it goes away immediately. If you are in this space, you have a responsibility to your fellow walkers. And that is a hard thing for a lot of people to wrap their arms around. They're not used to being responsible to people in an online space. They think that basically it's the wild, wild west and they can do whatever they want. I would like to suggest to you quite the opposite. I would like to think of this as kind of how I feel when I go into my mother's sparkling clean living room. I literally take off my shoes. It's not necessarily a place one should revere like a church or a synagogue, but it's a place that takes respect. 
that you need to bring your best self into the room, like I will when I go to my parents' house in a moment. That does mean employing those strategies. That does mean remembering that you're not only here for you. Remembering that you are spraying, whether or not you want to, and the choice is yours as to what you're going to spray. Are you going to spray kind candor? Are you going to spray be keeping yourself safe so that difficult topics can be so that difficult topics can be met with equanimity and difficult topics can be handled and we know that no one is going to blow up, shut down, or run away because that is how we keep the container safe and that's how we're able to talk about hard things because we are going to start talking about harder and harder things. We are going to start talking hardcore about relationships. Are we ready? I don't know. But with everything that happened last week and particularly my losing about, I think it was four friends in three days. We need to learn this stuff. We need to learn it. You need to learn it. That's a big deal. Which means whether or not we are fully ready, we need to work on two tracks. We need to work on getting ready and we need to do the work in the present moment whether or not we totally feel we have a full toolbox. Okay? So, prescriptions. Yes, and there was someone um, that asked last night, why are you micromanaging us? I'm going to tell you flat out. I don't think it's micromanaging for one thing. Ah. But I also think this. There is a method to what we're doing. It's cumulative and it's prescriptive. People are used to being in online racial justice spaces where they're told what not to do. Hey, white people, don't do this. We'll make... Proscription is fine. There's a place for that. Don't put your hand on a hot stove. Don't step on her toe. That's fine. But then what do you do? Nature abhors a vacuum, right? So if you've been told what not to do, but you're not quite sure what to do, that can leave you paralyzed and overwhelmed. I do have a strong point of view about both the genesis for this material, the foundations on which it lies, how to do it, how to do it well. So yes, I am telling you, this is the best way to go about it. So when people tell me, by the way, since we're on the subject, when people tell me, you know, I thank you, I'm going to just read through this stuff and, and I'll get back to you in a few weeks or a few months once I feel more comfortable. No, you don't want to do that. For one thing, you're never going to get comfortable enough. Okay? You won't. You have to practice. And again, you need to learn how to hold two things in your hand at one time. One, that you are learning skills that are not native to you. And two, you're going to use these skills and mess up a lot before you do. But it's not going to get any better if you wait before you try. And by the way, most people never actually try. Here's a fun fact. 300 or more or less of you onboarded. I've seen about 50 of your faces. We've lost about 15 people because I can see what the numbers look like. And I also know who has actually been doing the prescriptive work of going through the guidelines and looking at the pinned post. I know exactly who's doing that and who isn't. And for seasoned people who should be setting a good example and modeling the behavior and the safest space of lace on race, you guys aren't doing it either. So if we're going to have these hard conversations, you guys need to gird your loins. Last night in a very long thread, very long, very long, yes, seriously, there weren't enough Vig Newtons in my house. It was a question of whether or not it was worth it to do the work as prescribed. I'll just do it this way. I'll come back. It was too long. There's all those videos are just so long. All right. 
I'm going to say it again, but before I do it, and it could be because it's really hot in this truck and I need to turn the air conditioning on, which means I need to leave soon. If you cannot handle reading something for 10 minutes or a 50-minute audio session with the indomitable Krista Tippett on On Being, how do you think you are going to get the tools and the stamina to do this work reliably and consistently in real life? I am not asking very much of you at all. It's not that I am asking too much. It's that everything else in your life demands too little. And so you see the small amounts of commitment, and it is a small amount. I'll be blunt. The small amounts of commitment that I'm asking for you as some sort of onerous, impossible goal. It is not. I'm asking you to come here once or twice a week. By the way, I've reread all the pen posts too. In a dedicated way. It took me about three hours. I read fast. So let's double it. Let's totally go with the fact that you've got a life outside Lace on Race. Let's say it takes you a week or two to get through everything. If the goal of this space and the reason you're here is to reduce the harm to black and brown people from white and white adjacent and white presenting people, then I would think that an hour and a half of your time is not too much, period. I would think that reading all the comments is not too much. This is a rehearsal space. It's a lab. And if you cannot do the minimal things without clenching, without pushback, yes, I have a very specific point of view, and I... Am I allowed to say this? We're right here in the parking lot in Lemon Grove. No one can hear us. It's just between us. Shh. I know what I'm doing a little bit. I'll say it out loud. I know what I'm doing a little bit. Yes to you new people and to some people who are a year or two later are still on the fence and even to seasoned people who have commitment but it's been sometimes intermittent and particularly to the leaders that we are growing in this space and sustainer circle. We are doing this for the purpose of reducing harm in the world. I am asking you to turn on all of your capacity willingness and volition to do that. I'm going to talk to you later. But so far, let's talk about all of these things. Put your comments down there. Oh, oh, I'll do another one specifically to it. But have you guys had a chance to write Marlise a love letter, either on the Lace on Race website or here on the page? And if you do, consider um, a baby shower gift for her. Like I said, we can't do rattles or baby games, but we can let her know how much we care about her, how much we appreciate her, and really help her bring this baby in in good fashion. More later. I'm really liking doing these videos. I hope you do too. I feel like I'm with you, like you're in the passenger seat over here. All right, talk to you later. Mask on! Sort of. Hold on. Mask on!